the Arduino environment's built-in serial plotter. You can use it as a cheap little representative oscilloscope if you want, or a couple of other things that I will show you here. Using the Arduino serial monitor as a debug window is good for debugging your sketch as you work on it. Whether you plan to use a display later or not, it's still good to see what's really happening. So right here I have my digital thermometer one wire right here, and I can see in the debug window as I warm it up it changes from 24 something to 25 something degrees, and I also have a potentiometer on an analog port, so I can change it from 0 up to 1023 and see that it is responsive within the range. So I know the hardware works and my sketch is working. But sometimes it's better to see an actual plot of this data so that, well, first of all, you get more than this little bit of vertical text. And secondly, if you can see the graph, you can see at a distance or at a glance if something has changed its trending nature or something like that. So all we need to do is close the serial monitor and then run the serial plotter. Now my data is available here. So there's 500 data points at a time on display, and if you exceed 500 it'll just scroll, so you get the most current 500 samples. And this isn't time-based, this is just whenever you make a new plot on the y-axis, it'll count as a new increment on x. So if you want this x-axis to actually represent time, you have to set up delays and timings in your sketch so that you're plotting at exact intervals. But all I care right now is to just see what's happening as I take each sample. The y-axis auto scales to fit the data and it tries to center it. So in this case with temperature being 25 or 26 degrees and the analog input between 20 and 25, it gave me a minimum 18 and a maximum 30. And we can see the temperature is trending downward because it's getting back to room temperature. But one problem with this auto scale, temperature in degrees Celsius is obviously only going to go so high, but my analog input can go from 0 up to 1023. So if I change my analog input, first if I go way down to 0, well this auto scaled and added more vertical space, so now the temperature data is more squished. I'll warm up the sensor again and make it climb so we can see more exaggerated impact. And now if I bring the potentiometer way high, as we climb up, we're only about 10% of our full-scale analog input, and already this temperature data is pretty squished if we increase the analog all the way then bring it back down wherever we want, it doesn't matter. The fact that we've gone this far with our data, now the temperature is hidden, it's just a flat line. If we come over and look at the sketch, this is basically a scaled down version of a previous project, I'll link below, for the DS18B20 one-wire digital thermometer. So now in the main loop I'm ready to access the thermometer, and it defaults to showing degrees Celsius, so I go in and request the temperature, and then I print on the serial monitor as usual, and I use print, not print line, because on the plotter, if we want more than one item being graphed simultaneously, we just use print, and then we separate each one with a delimiter, which can be either a space, comma, or this tab with the slash T, and then the next time I say serial.print and throw another number in here, that will be considered a new data point. And so here I'm printing the temperature and I'm printing whatever the current reading on the analog zero input is. And when I have printed all the data points I want for the current x-axis interval, then I do a print line and it will plot the current y data points on both of these values at this point in time along x. So now you can see as that old historical extreme analog data scrolled out of view, it re-auto-scaled down to show a centered view of the data. But as soon as I go extreme again on something, it's going to scale again, and that's distracting and hard to read what's going on. So one thing we can do is scale 
all of our data points so they will fit within a given range. So with the temperature really being around 25 degrees Celsius and it might go up to 30 something, I could just multiply the temperature value and then it will be extreme just like this analog data. Or I could keep the temperature as is and divide my analog reading down so that it fits somewhere in a tighter range. And then when I have an extreme high, it'll be divided down and might only go to here. And then this won't be all scaled in a way that I can't read the temperature. I don't really need to see, you know, the number 1023 or something up here. All I need to know is if my maximum theoretical is going to be here, I just need to know that my analog input is close to max, halfway, or close to min. So let's scale this analog down. I've already got some things here commented out. So if I take away the raw analog reading and I bring in this other one where I divide the analog reading by 32, now 1023, the maximum analog in, divided by 32 is going to give me about 32. It'll round up to 32. So I go from 0 to 32 instead of 0 to 1023. Let's compile this and upload it. And also note how much noise there is on the raw analog data. So here's where the new sketch got uploaded. I didn't change anything on the temperature. It's still there because we haven't scaled that. And I did not change the analog input potentiometer. But notice all this noise, which was at about 12 to 13 or so on the analog input with the pot turned mostly down. Now all that jitter has been divided by 32, so 12 divided by 32 is a very, very small number. So it comes out as zero, which is more useful probably, at least for a visual representation. So now our analog is from zero to 32. If we turn it up to max, it goes up to 32 or close to it, whatever we can get with our potentiometer. Whatever the case, our max is up there now and our min is down at zero. So we can change our analog however we want. The temperature did not really go out of whack. So now if I want to warm up this temperature sensor, so I brought that up a few degrees and now I can still do whatever I want, full range on my analog in. And I don't need to know that this is scaled down by 32. Right now it's at 16 and I can see visually it's about halfway up. Here I can see it's pretty much maximum. Here I can see it's pretty much minimum. Or whatever in between. And everything is visually representing what's going on as long as I'm aware that I've scaled it. For another scenario where we might want to do something a little different, I've set my analog input close to my temperature data now. I'm going to restart the Arduino and clear the serial monitor so we can get a fresh perspective with the data this close. So I restarted the serial plotter and I put these two data points, the temperature and the analog input, close together to show when it auto scales like this, the maximum I am going to get by chance is 32 or 31 with my analog divided down, but my minimum analog can still go down to zero. And since our data points currently are close together, it's zoomed in, so my minimum is only 20. Now, what if my one of these data points go up? So my temperature, let's increase that. And let's make it go up about one division on this serial plotter graph. But now if we bring the analog data down and this thing re-zooms, well, I'll bring the analog back up. Well, now because it's zoomed out to allow this scale to show all the way down to zero, my full division of temperature is now squished down to only a half division. Well, this might mess me up. I'd rather sometimes have this stable, whatever it's going to be min to max, 0 to 32. I'd rather just have it power up this way and just stay here. So one way to do this is to impose false data, just a straight line at 0 and a straight line at 32 along with my actual data points and then it's going to auto zoom it like this all the time. And I'll bring this plot in as well as this other one at 0. 
So now we're plotting a straight line at 32 and a straight line at 0 along with our temperature and analog. And let's put this sketch in action. So now when I run the serial plotter, I've got my temperature and analog. I've got this line fixed at 32 and this line fixed at 0. So even though my data points are close together, I have this fixed full scale. So now I can change my temperature up and down. So I brought temperature up about half a division. And no matter what I do on analog, I can go all the way to zero, all the way to 31 or 32, as the rounding error lets me. Whatever I want to do, my temperature is always scaled the same. So now if I glance away and I glance back, I really know my temperature is doing what I expected. So now I'll show one more use for doing a straight line. Over here I have this line put at 27, so I'll bring that into effect. And what this does, it just plots another straight line over here at about 27. It's going to always be there, just like this extreme high and low. And it's just there as a visual aid. So I have my analog here, I can change this as I need. So now it's becoming more obvious the temperature is kind of slowly going down and the analog is here. So here's my straight line at 27. Why would I want one of these? Well again, just as a visual marker, just like if you put a cursor on an oscilloscope or a spectrum analyzer and you want to be able to visually see if you're at a certain level, what if I just want to know when my temperature has increased to 27 or beyond. Well now I know I'm getting close and I'm at that and now I've exceeded 27 degrees. If I wanted to actually do something in the sketch of course I can write that in but just as a visual aid again while I'm debugging maybe I've got a thermocouple on a heat sink and I just want to monitor it and I don't want it to get above a certain temperature because it might compromise whatever I'm measuring. So I can use this as a bit of a diagnostic test equipment kind of tool. Maybe the purpose of my sketch is just to have a thermal chart. Maybe I've got a separate physical circuit that I wanted to monitor the temperature and just be able to keep an eye on it. So I just run this sketch, set a limit, do what I'm doing and just keep watching the temperature scroll along. So actually, let me put this reference line at 16, because it's halfway from 0 to 32, and it will kind of be like an oscilloscope midpoint. Maybe we can use this analog input as a cheap, free oscilloscope. Let's put this sketch in. So here's our plotter again. We have our min and max and reference line in the middle at 16, so this blue trace would be our analog input. And now this is going as fast as it can however long it takes to read in the analog and print out these plots. So if we change our analog now, we have a crude oscilloscope. <laughs> it kind of looks like we're generating a uh, digital sine wave very poorly. But if we go fast, hey, so this was just me going slow, and it reads a static number, another static number. But if I'm going really fast, it's reading pretty well. So you could use this, again, just as a representative tool and do some useful things, probably.